Well, you can stay, but you kind of have to stay out of the way. Can you do that? All right. Obviously not. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of 4.0 and Below, where the good, the fair, and the ugly comics roam. I'm your host, W.B. Kelso, and today we got something, uh, we kind of blew it in October, and so we're going to try to maybe take care of your Halloween hangovers a little bit, you know, solve a little post-mortem depression before the uh, seasonal affective disorder blues really kick in. And so today we're going to concentrate on a horror series that doesn't get a lot of publicity. No one really talks about it, which is kind of too bad, because I thought it was kind of good when I first read it way back in the early 80s. Uh, we're talking about Night Force today, courtesy of uh, writer Marv Wolfman and Gene Colan. Of course, those are the same two guys who brought us most of Tomb of Dracula. I think Colan drew all of it. Wolfman sort of took over pretty early the writing chores on that. Of course, um, Wolfman defected to DC and uh, kicked out the new Teen Titans with George Perez. And he eventually talked Colin into defecting over there with him. And even though uh, horror anthology comics were kind of pretty much dead in the water at the time, Wolfman basically talked DC into doing another one by um, having a sort of be an anthology, but then having reoccurring characters to sort of tie it all together above and beyond like the usual Crypt Keeper stuff. And the result of this was Night Force, which officially made its debut as a pullout in uh, New Teen Titans number 21. Which, uh, let's see if we can find it real quick. Yeah, right there. <laughs> see that? Yep. So, there we go. And then... Officially kicked off with Night Force number one. Now, the, the most recurring character was uh, Baron Winters, who sort of gathered together certain teams of experts to take on whatever supernatural disaster was happening at the time. And uh, most of those involved a reporter named Jack Gold, uh, a psychic uh, named Vanessa Van Helsing, and sure enough, yes, she's related to that Van Helsing. And then a parapsychologist named um, Donovan Kane. And uh, Kane kind of works for um, not really the CIA, but pretty close. And um, they're trying to, through scientific means, tap into the forces of evil and weaponize it. And of course, this is the era of the Cold War, so... They're trying to beat the Russians to the punch, and uh, Van Helsing is like the world's most powerful psychic who can actually summon these horrible demons and so the Russians are after her and they basically kidnap her and the first arc is basically uh, Jack and Donovan trying to rescue her and get her back from the Soviets because for some reason the Baron cannot leave his funky little Sanctum Sanctorum and, until he can later it was a whole thing so anyway uh, issue number two continues that fight And issue number three. And issue number four. Still in focus? Sort of. <laughs> okay. Issue number five. Issue number six. Now, look at Baron Winters there. Um, he, you can easily sort of draw surrogates from from Night Force back to Turn of Dracula, because basically with, uh, with his duster, he really looks like Dracula from that series. Basically just, you know, shaved his mustache off. And uh, that's him, you know, with the duster and everything. And let's see, and then issue number seven... That stand up there basically ends that first arc where uh, they do manage to save Vanessa, but not without cost because I think Kane loses both an arm and a leg during the insulting, uh, resulting mayhem and death and destruction. And of course, the world was almost eaten by that demon right there, that one. And uh, and that was sort of Wolfman's goal. He, um, you know, he kind of wanted to keep it 
you know, where like anyone can die at any moment, that kind of thing. And so you really couldn't get attached to these characters too much. And then after that first arc was done, we switched to the second arc, which I actually thought was pretty good. Um, and the Baron's recruit for this is actually a criminal that he sends to uh, uh, a brownstone tenement in New York where for some reason, some alien entity, you can see the little little Cthulhu monster there, uh, has sealed the place. And basically, it's sort of a psychological experiment from beyond the stars where this monster gives everyone there anything they could desire, from VHS tapes to food to drugs, to make them compliant and happy. And it's sort of a test to see how long it takes them to become complete compliant I assume before an invasion force comes, I don't know what the deal is. So, um, and those that do try to escape usually wind up getting themselves killed of their own, usually accidental. And so the monster isn't actively trying to kill anyone, just preventing them from escaping. But if they do die, the monster doesn't want that the meat, <laughs> the meat, quote unquote, go to waste. And so it basically eats them. I just thought that was pretty cool and gruesome. And I think this arc ran for three or four issues, I think. And the actual resolution of it, I thought, was actually pretty cool. How uh, the monster is eventually defeated by the criminal. Okay. Which brings us to, unfortunately, the last arc of Night Force, where the Baron actually gets a little more proactive uh, with Vanessa. And uh, his house has these, there's like little time portals everywhere. And he winds up back in the, uh, in the 1930s because there's some sort of conspiracy amongst these American businessmen who financed Hitler to take over Germany. Of course, you know where that all leads. But Hitler double-crossed them and they're all assassinated. And they've been haunting this house forever and someone else, someone finally got into this house but it had been sealed by the government for years but somehow... They got into it, it was a thing, and so uh, Baron Winters goes back in time to try to nip this all in the butt before it gets going, and I think this was supposed to enter or introduce the big baddie for the series, this guy named Zardok Grimm, who dates back to biblical times, and because like one of the main monsters is the, the seven-headed beast from the books of Revelations, and... Um, and so they're back in time in the 30s fighting. It's this freak show thing. It's pretty cool. And we sort of get the origin of the Baron here. And who's who's been pretty enigmatic. Oh my god, I cannot talk. Enigmatic? Is that the word I'm looking for? If not, it's close enough. So, uh, yeah, we sort of get that. And then, but then, um, the whole thing sort of wraps up really quickly in issue 14. Because the series was canceled, um, it didn't quite make it, and which is too bad. Because like I said I found the the premise pretty intriguing. Um, that second arc with the the beast in the building I thought was fantastic. Um, the last one, the first one was actually pretty good too. <laughs> I love the the Russian psychic stuff and the Russian secret base in Siberia that they go to. You know where all the weird shit is happening. I just love it. And, uh, like, the last arc felt a little rust, rushed and truncated because I assume, you know, sales were down and they pulled the plug on it pretty fast. So, um, and I, this last issue, it also promises that um, they were supposed to come back fairly soon in another miniseries. But that didn't happen for almost, like, 20 years. I know they sort of came back. I think Baron Winters came back. And it was part of, uh, in the late 90s, it was part of uh, a DC short-lived Weirdoverse. And, uh, yeah, that probably tells you everything you know on why that didn't last very long. Um, so, yeah, uh, these are these are dirt cheap. Dirt, dirt, dirt cheap if you can find them. You know, um, there's no collectability to them, but I think the story's pretty good. Wolfman kind of gets stuck on a few phrases like he always does. But... You know, I think it's pretty great, and I think it's well worth a read. So if you're looking for something spooky and a little different and a little offbeat, I highly recommend Night Force. Um, we got a couple more things lined up. It's for really to help, again, to help you all with your hangover or Halloween hangover cures. And, um, and then we've got another haul video hopefully coming up soon. And uh, beyond that, you know, this is WB Kelso for 4.0 and below. And remember to never... 
ever be embarrassed about what you can spin comic book wise. And until next time, catch you later. Bye.